The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. Hello, I'm Harold Weinbreck, Mayor of Cary, and thank you for joining us for this month's episode of Cary Matters. This program was created to help keep you informed and provide information about issues that council members are working on for our community. My co-host this month is Don France, who is the District B representative. District B is most of downtown and up along Harrison Avenue. And Don has been serving the citizens of Cary since 2007 and has just been reelected to serve a third term. Don, congratulations on your reelection and your many years of service. And thank you for being on this month's episode of Cary Matters. Well, thank you so much and thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to serving for another four years and continuing the good work we're doing here in Cary. And uh, seeing some of the exciting changes that are going on, especially in the downtown area and in my district. And uh, by the way, congratulations on your reelection. Oh, thanks, Don. Uh, it was unopposed the way I like <laughs> You know, one of the most important people that makes Cary one of the greatest places to live, work, and enjoy the town is the town manager. Last September, our town manager, Ben Shiver, retired after many years of service. So I thought it'd be a good idea to use this episode to give everyone an update on the process we're going through. What do you think? Sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, and then maybe we can give everyone an update on what's going on with the new downtown library, let everyone know about a new legislative action that impacts how we as a council vote, and talk a little bit about the town's newest community garden. Okay, sounds like a plan. Once, now former town manager Ben Shiver told the council he would be retiring last September, we began the process of hiring a new town manager by deciding on an outside consultant to help with the nationwide recruitment. After presentations, research, and several hours of discussion, the town council decided on Waters and Company executive recruitment out of Dallas, Texas. Waters and Company had several years of experience and promise to reach a wide range of top-level national candidates. After selecting the firm, the council worked on a job description for the position. Once this was finalized, the actual search began. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, the consultant received a little over 40 applicants for the town manager's position. They used about a month to interview, research, and background check each of the applicants, and then they presented a short list to council, which included extensive information about each candidate and an assessment of that candidate. Council then discussed at length each of those applicants and decided to hold interviews with several of them. Uh, these interviews, held over a day and a half on Friday and Saturday, allowed the council to narrow that list even further. Then the council held another round of interviews a few weeks later with an even smaller list of candidates. And in the end, while the council felt that each candidate had the potential to do a good job managing the town, the council unfortunately could not come to consensus. Uh, and in addition to that, we've got a new council member, Ken George, who was about to take office. So we decided the best course of action was to conclude that search and start a new one. That's right, Don. And as you know, that was an extremely difficult decision and at an extremely difficult time. Well, all put our, we all put our hearts and souls in the first search, and we believe the best course of action for the council was to start over. So now the question is everyone is asking is how are we moving forward? Well, the council is talking with the consultant and reviewing the requirements used in the first search. I, for one, would be surprised if we didn't make a few tweaks. And once that's done, the consultant will begin actively searching the nation once again. And while there is no timeline, it is important to mention that we will be working 
as expeditiously as possible. Mm -hmm. And while we realize this delay may be frustrating to some, it is important for us to get this right because this is absolutely the most important decision that we will make as council members. Uh, we do also want to thank Interim Town Manager Mike Bajoric and the Town of Cary staff along with the Cary community for giving us the time and support to get the job done right. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to take a short break and afterwards we're going to talk about all those things you mentioned, Don. <laughs> Sounds like a full episode. Sounds good to me. All right. Staying healthy. We're making new friends. We're learning new things. And having lots of fun. Join us at the Cary Senior Center where we are creating active retirement years. We're back. Thanks for staying with us. We're frequently asked about what's going on in downtown <laughs> all the time. In <laughs> November, the council made a decision on the location of the new downtown library and the parking that goes with it. Yay. Maybe you can give us an update, Don. <laughs> okay. Well, as you mentioned, the council discussed design considerations for Wake County's new downtown Cary Regional Library back in November. Uh, the new library, which will replace the existing library that's on Academy Street, will be between 22,000 to 25,000 square feet and two stories tall. Uh, our partners at Wake County tell us that the new library will include large and medium-sized multi-purpose programming rooms, as well as a quiet study lounge. There will be 11 librarians on staff compared to three at the existing library and over 125,000 books along with increased public computer space. To stay on schedule and not jeopardize Wake County's bond funding requirements, the library needs to be completed by the fall of 2018. To make this happen, Wake County needed to begin design work by this month. So the council decided that the library will be built on Walnut Street next to the town square and across from the Cary Arts Center. And to help with the project, the town has committed to building a parking deck adjacent to that new library. That deck will have around 350 spaces and serve not only the new library, but also the Cary Arts Center, the downtown park, special events, and even future private development that we hope to see occur in the area. Now, just like we try to do with most everything in Cary, this will be a very attractive looking parking deck, as far as parking decks go. Uh, it's going to be right at the park in the town square, so we want to make sure that it doesn't detract from all the other cool things that will be happening there. We're gonna put a special facade around the deck so that it looks more like a, a business and residence in the downtown and doesn't stand out and scream like a parking deck. And if all of our plans work out like we hope, private development will occur between the deck and Walnut and Walker Streets. Private development, especially office or commercial, needs the visibility and access from the street to be viable. Wow, great update. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Last month, the council changed its voting rules because of an action by the state legislature. Keep in mind that in North Carolina, cities and towns operate under Dillon's rule and not home rule, which means that we can only do what the state legislature tells us we can do. And pretty much we can only do those things the way they say we can. So for as long as I've been an elected official, which is spanning over three decades now, hard to believe. Yeah, right. A council member was required to vote on any matter that came before the council unless the council member had been excused because the matter was likely to have a direct, substantial, and readily identifiable financial impact on the council member. Basically, that means if you left without being excused, your vote on any action that was taken was counted as a yes vote. 
that was the long-standing law across the state, but that has changed now, right, Don? That's right, unfortunately. Um, now are there actually three ways to vote on an issue? Uh, yes, no, and not voting at all. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, under the new law, the General Assembly created in their infinite wisdom, a council member can actually abstain from voting on a zoning ordinance matter just because. There doesn't actually have to be a reason. And I guess, theoretically, a council member could just walk out during the vote and their unexcused absence would count as an abstention. Except, technically, that word isn't even in the state's new law, so kind of not even sure what that means. But anyways, this could make it a lot harder for councils to put together the majorities necessary to adopt official, difficult zoning ordinance changes. So, even though we were elected to make the decisions, now we really don't have to. Wow. Wow, that's wow, right. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news for us here in Cary is that we have a really great group of people on the council who are dedicated to serving, which includes making tough choices sometimes. So I'm thinking that this won't impact us too much. I'm thinking so too. We're very fortunate. Too bad the legislature feels it's necessary to once again meddle, in, meddle with our ability to govern and serve our citizens. Well, let's change gears a little bit and talk about something positive. How about the town's newest community garden? Okay. Uh, well, lots of you probably know about the community garden we have for those 55 years and older at the Cary Senior Center. Well, this year we'll be opening our next garden, uh, which will actually be at the future Carpenter Park. And this one won't be age restricted. So, Yay. yeah. <laughs> uh, and it will actually include room for over 20 individual garden plots that are available for Cary citizens to rent for only $33 a year. The town will provide nutrient-rich soil, water, and other forms of support and resources. Uh, all you have to do is provide the seeds, muscle, and the time. So, and everything that you grow is yours to keep. So if you are interested in a plot in the Cary Community Garden at Carpenter Park, make sure to get your application in right away before they're all gone. Cool. <laughs> what a great way to start the new year. Okay, coming up after the break, we're going to give you some insights in what's coming up at Town Hall in January and how you can be involved. Do you love bird watching in your backyard? Do you like the idea of Cary being a national leader in caring for the three Bs, birds, bees, and butterflies? If so, then we'd like to invite you to participate in the Cary Garden for Wildlife partnership with the National Wildlife Federation. Whether you have an apartment balcony or backyard, you can create an outdoor space that attracts beautiful wildlife and helps restore habitat. By providing food, water, and cover, and a place for wildlife to raise their young, you not only help the three bees, but you also qualify to become an official certified wildlife habitat. To learn how to become a part of this program, visit townofcary.org and search Cary Garden for Wildlife. We're back, and in this final segment of Cary Matters, we want to talk about some of the things happening in January and how you can be involved. Don, what kind of meetings do we have this month? Well, it looks like we're going to be seeing a lot of each other oh this boy. month. Uh, we have two regularly scheduled meetings. The first one will be on Thursday, January 14th, and the second one will be on Wednesday, January 27th. We also have a quasi-judicial meeting scheduled for Thursday, January the 7th. In addition to that, we have a work session on Tuesday, January 26th. And if that wasn't enough, we will be having the annual council staff working retreat from Thursday, January 28th to Saturday, January 30th in Greensboro. Um, this year's retreat is going to focus on infill and redevelopment, two of the biggest challenges we face in Cary as we reach build out. Phew. That's a lot of meetings. That's a lot of meetings. Especially during that last week. We are going to see a lot of each other. 
Well, there are other things going on in January while the council is buried in meetings. On January 4th through the 8th, the town will be holding a free fitness kickoff at the Bond Park Community Center. So if you added a little holiday weight like I did, this would be the perfect opportunity for you to do something about it. If you like the snow, the town will be making it for the annual Winter Wonderland snow tubing, which is also at Bond Park. It will be held on the 8th and the 9th, and the tubes are provided, so don't bring your own tubes. There will also be several MLK Dream Fest events running from the 15th through the 18th. The Cary Arts Center and the Cary have several performances and movies being held during the month, so make sure to check out the calendar at the town's website at townofcary.org. And keep in mind that space is sometimes limited for all the things we've talked about and advanced registration is often required. And one more thing, um, this is also our survey year. Every two years since 1998, the town has conducted a scientific citizen satisfaction survey. We do it by phone, so if you get a call this month from one of our researchers, please answer it. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, I won't lie to you, it'll take maybe 25 minutes or so of your time, but it's really, really important to us. The council and town staff rely on those survey results to help us know what matters to you. So thanks in advance for taking the time. Well, that's about it for this edition of Carry Matters. We appreciate your watching and hope that what we've shared has been of interest for you. Please let us hear from you because your time is important and we want this show to be of value of you as we work to bring you, our citizens, closer to your government. All right, and remember, help keep carry litter free clean, green, and beautiful by volunteering with our Spruce program. Thanks for watching, and as always, thanks for choosing to call Carrie home. This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.